range of motion, hip flexion. With the patient supine, first look for the greater trochanter of the femur. This is where the axis of the goniometer will be placed. The stationary arm will be lined up in the middle of the lateral side of the trunk. And the movable arm will be lined up on the lateral side of the femur, pointing towards the lateral condyle of the femur. Next, place your hand on the posterior distal part of the femur and push the hip into flexion. Make sure to keep the goniometer lined up. The normal expected value for hip flexion is 120 degrees. Range of motion, hip abduction. With the patient's supine, look for both anterior superior iliac spines. Place the axis of the goniometer on the anterior superior iliac spine of the side that is being tested, and the stationary arm pointing towards the opposite anterior superior iliac spine. The movable arm is placed in the middle of the thigh pointing towards the patella. Pull the leg of the side that is being tested until the patient's leg can go no more or the opposite hip hikes up. The normal expected value of hip abduction is 45 degrees. Manual muscle test at the ellipsoas. With the patient sitting and holding onto the edge of the table, the therapist instructs the patient to fully flex their hip. The therapist places one hand on the shoulder and the knee of the side being tested and instructs the patient to only move you as they push down on their knee. Manual muscle test at the gluteus medius. With the therapist standing behind the sideline patient, the underneath hip and knee joint are slightly flexed. The tested leg is put to abduction, slight extension, and external rotation. With one hand stabilizing the pelvis, patient is instructed to don't let me move you as a force of abduction and flexion is applied near the ankle. Muscle length, 90-90 hamstring test. With the patient supine, the contralateral leg is laying flat as the other leg is put into 90 degrees of hip flexion. The patient extends their knee until there is restriction. The axis of the goniometer is placed on the lateral epicondyle of the femur, while the stationary arm points to the greater trochanter and the movable arm points to the lateral malleolus. The angle of knee flexion is now measured. Any angle of less than 20 degrees indicates normal hamstring length, and an angle greater than 20 degrees indicates tightness of the hamstrings. This patient shows 10 degrees of knee flexion, which indicates normal hamstring length. 